Hope is a dangerous thing. Hope can drive a man insane. Some boys. I remember the time where I was wasn't really doing anything productive in my room, and now this is pretty quiet. This is more insanity dri driving. Driving. Oh, the complete white thing is not good. I might add another color backdrop, like black or something. In order to accent the room because you know, complete white room can turn you insane. Honestly, these days. I've been spending a lot of time outside of my room, surprisingly. And more so, just outside. But in a moment where I wasn't really going outside, in a moment where I was just inside all day, not really doing anything productive, fucking about, think to myself, bro, mom's turning old. Bro, you're not going to school. Bro, you have no qualifications. Bro, you're not making any money. Bro, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And before I started recording videos on myself, I uploaded to YouTube, Jesus Christ. I'm picking my earbuds as well. And before I started recording videos and uploading to YouTube, which gave me a huge sense of fulfillment, gave me an outlet to talk, I noticed myself being so untalkative. So untalkative. To the point where. I had to change a bit. A bit more reserved now. A bit more stoic. But the moments where I didn't, I wasn't like this, and I didn't have the improvement, good some improvement habits, and I was teetering on the borderline of insanity, I had hope. I had dreams. I had delusions. I think delusions is the right word, but I think dream is the better word. I had dreams and hope. And it drove me insane. I woke up in the same place for the past year. I did the same exact things for the past year. I had my computer in front of me here, but I've already been seriously doing work recently because of this laptop. Which is why I've considered investing into a laptop. Like a good one as well. Like this one has. HDMI port, which means if I had a PS4, I could plug in my PS4 and use it as a monitor, which I'm not going to, obviously, because I don't like playing video games. And this has an SD card slot, which is perfectly useful with this camera. Ethernet, obviously, lock, and yeah, USB C. I don't know what this is for. I can't, I can't charge it with USB C, so I literally don't know what it's for. Maybe it's for transfer files. And then USB port, perfect. So it's, it's a good laptop, I like it. It's not optimized, like I, I can play chess on it, but it's not optimized entirely for gaming under that, which I don't want, by the way. I want a, a laptop that's good enough to video edit, but not to game, which is way tough because that, that requires a you know video editing card and a pretty solid CPU, which is usually what's required in video games. But then again, I could just have that, like a good gaming computer and not just game. I just use it for office work. I use it for editing. Anyways, before that, I had hope, I had dreams, I had thoughts, I had delusions, like I said before, of me becoming successful, me having my entire life ahead of me, world, champ world champion status, world champion, I don't know why I said it like that, world champion status, multi-millionaire status, accomplished boxer status, accomplished inventor status, accomplished, accomplished entrepreneur status. I saw myself in them Grant Cardone talk business talk videos. I saw myself delivering speeches full of confidence in front of thousands of people about my tech products, about my history, telling my story, telling my life, telling how I conquered. Obviously, I was a bit of an older gentleman at, the at this time. I was probably around 30, 35. But I still saw myself that way. But that seeing myself there, that, that result is only the amount, not amalgamation, the accumulation of marginal gains it is only the it's only through the accumulation of marginal gains it's only through years of death years of oh, how's it, how's it, hard work and then dedication and effort and it just molded and amalgamated into defort what the fuck 
too many thoughts. Years of hard work and dedication and effort. That is what would be required to reach that position. What did I do? I did nothing but be a spurg. And I fucking hated myself because of it. It genuinely hurts when I'm lazy, ladies and gentlemen. When I try, like Brandon Carter said it best. OG in the self-improvement space. Like when you start doing these self-improvement ha uh, habits and then you try to revolve back to the shitty bullshit habits of like video games and this and uh, movies and all the, and junk food, all that, all that stupid shit, you will feel guilty. You'll feel mentally guilty because you know, you know what you're doing is wrong. And you know what you're doing is going to cost you in the long run. Think about that guy who's not really, really serious about his career, not really serious about life. You're playing video games on the down low. I mean, if you're already rich and you want to burn some time and video gaming is your passion, sure. Sure. But you're already successful, you're already accomplished. And I always say, oh, if you're already rich, people are like, oh, why can't I be just normal? And then I, I don't have to be rich, I can still play the video game anyway. Please keep telling you that. Telling yourself that. Please keep telling yourself that. All the moment you could, all those moments you could have with your mother, with your family, gone. The holiday that you could have been on, had you spent the, the beginning five years of your self journey, when you were like 14, five years, 19, now you're a multi-millionaire, for example, happens in real life. I've seen it in Mangaji. Now you're a multi-millionaire, and now you can just afford to spoil your mom and do whatever you want to do in life. You can give your mother the best life she could possibly get. She can travel the world by herself, or maybe she can find someone who's just a single mother like me, like Magaji. People don't fucking think about this shit. It's purely selfish to be normal. We have an average income, average wage. Baron Carter even says it more. He says, so what I had found interesting, which ties into the hope thing, by the way, he said, when you're middle class and you're average, with an average income, an average wage, an average life, an average woman, and average kids, and you tell your kids with average physique, by the way, which is not even a good physique, like skinny fat or fat, skinny is not even average. Like, what do you, if you want to be skinny? Skinny is better than skinny fat and fat, but motherfucker, man, come on. Then you tell your kids, oh, you can be anything you want in life, and then they look at you like you're a bitch, and they don't fucking believe you. And they tell you, and then you, they ask you, so this is what you wanted in life? To be this average? To be this mediocre? To be this much of a bullshitter? To cope, to lie, to have you make excuses, to kill time, burn time, watch movies, play video games. One hour of video games a day when I get back after work. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. And then they, you make excuses. This is what Brandon said. Most people that have this middle class life with their dreams crushed, with their hopes crushed, they make excuses. So you don't know, I was tough, you know, uh, tough. For me, and it was hard times. Motherfucker, man. It was tough for everyone in the come up. But you chose to sell out. You chose to remain stagnant. You chose to stay in the same exact place that you used to. That you are. Well, not you used to be. You are. The lack of hope is immensely dangerous. It's immensely dangerous. It is what allows you to be normal. It is what allows you to yearn for mediocrity. I've yearned to be normal before. I wanted to be normal before. But if I was normal, if I had a normal upbringing, and didn't have a chaotic childhood, and a chaotic upbringing, then I would not be the person I am today. I would be a completely different, possibly more so, no, definitely more so boy individual than you could possibly imagine. Normal in this day and age is it's fucking atrocious. The normal man is broke. Less than a thousand dollars in their savings account. As a man, by the way. <sighs> the little man's ugly. Fat. Not ugly by choice. 
I'll give you by bad if I I'll give you by choice. I'll give you personality, behavior, gossiping, social media, all this bullshit. That's the average man. The average woman too. Maybe a cheater what as if it was a woman. High body count. Phenomenal. The Patrick women. <laughs> I felt insane. I felt I was going insane. During this period of time, probably around a month. Yes, mom. Yes, I. Okay. Hope drove me insane. Hope drove me to the brink where I was feeling as if everything would collapse under me. As if at any moment, everyone around me could die. Or they turn old, they get a disease, or we just run out of money. They just can't work anymore, they get an injury. That's what I felt at that moment. And it drove me insane. I was thinking to myself, the today especially, which tra which traumatized me a little bit. I, I have to say this: I might not sound traumatized entirely, but I completely and utterly believe I am traumatized. I don't know if I'm the same person before. I saw my mom today wear a dress, and it's a dress that usually older gram Asian grandmas wear. I thought to myself, "Why would you wear that?" Oh shit. Why is she wearing a dress that old Asian grandmas wear? one. Within the next 10 years, when I'm 27, I have to become rich. There is no room for fault. I have to become rich. There is no want to become rich. Oh yeah, I, I would like to be rich. I would like to make more money. There's no need to become rich. I need to become rich because I need to do No. I have to become rich. I'm not trying to become rich. I am going to become rich. This means fiscally wealthy. Financially wealthy. I saw my mother age in real time. I still remember when she looked completely like young, arriving full of life a few years ago. My memory is quite sharp in this regard. Because I only seem to remember the things that truly matter to me. I don't remember shit like school, bullshit school things, I don't, I don't, I don't care. It, was, it has no significance to me. It doesn't aid me in any way. It's drawn me insane as well a bit. Hope can drive a man insane. But perhaps in that insanity, you will actually do something about it. It is dangerous. It is even more dangerous when you have no hope. When you sit there hopeless, complacent. Going on with the flow, bro. Yippee, video games. When you allow your philosophy to be dictated by others, you allow yourself to be a sheep. Allow yourself to be mediocre. Let me kind of fuck. Maybe let me fucking scared. For all the boys <laughs> and girls, I've got ten percent female viewers. It's quite high. Just bit some game for the girls. <laughs> oh man, well, I got some itchy part of my palm here. It's really itchy. I think my mother age, like I thought, I, I immediately, like, I don't think about it. A lot of my friends at the moment are like, yeah, party, bro. A lot of the girls as well, before, as I know, I've said it before on this channel, they're trying to find other dudes now. They're doing this with their life, they're doing that with their life. Of this boyfriend, that boyfriend, getting run through, CC. To what avail? How's that going to allow you to get a relationship in the future? It goes both ways. A man with an extremely high body count 
often finds difficulty in finding women that trust him completely and utterly because of his high body count. A woman with a high body count is straight up under undesirable for 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 men. I, I see those type of women getting literally rejected. Like it's it, motherfucker man, low SMB, real low SMB. Those individuals are hopeless. It's a weird topic to have. On one hand, hope can drive you insane. On another hand, having no hope, being hopeless, put you in an insane predicament of mediocrity, of sadness, lifelong sadness, lifelong loneliness, lifelong mediocrity. Insanity is no easy emotion, feeling, mindset to conquer. But if you don't feel insane, just a little, for how shit your life can be, your life is. Like, I have a nice room, guys. I have a nice room. Speak to my mom here. Got a nice computer. Got a nice laptop. Got a nice tablet. That I read books on. Got a nice phone. It's Android. <laughs> but it's nice. I don't know why I made that noise. I got a nice room, some stock, bedroom. Like it's clean. My room's clean. Candles. Motherfucking man. My room's nice. Which is the issue. This is the perfect environment to get complacent. It's just. I allow myself to just be the same. Honestly, I was at 18. I'm gonna go into 18 being broke. Like, broke to me is less than 50 G's in my bank account, by the way. I have more money than the average 17, 18 year old by far. But I'm talking about adult money here. I'm talking about real world money. I'm broke. And until I reach that amount, and you guys will know, I'll just say I'm not broke anymore. And you guys, oh, yeah, he has 50 grand in his bank account, which is stupid. I won't have 50 G's in my bank account. I have it through spread through multiple bank accounts. And I'll most likely have some a lot in cash as well. Because having too much in your bank account is stupid because then it can just get stolen. Half of the PayPal, Stripe, Metro, Mon Metro, Monzo, Barclays, Lloyds, HSBC, 2000, 2000, yeah, spread it out. Maximum 2.5k, maximum 3k, because that's um, the amount, by the way, boys, that pretty much gets insured. And for 17, 18, 18 to 25, like, it has protection over. At 17 to 18, 16 to 18, you have like, um, like interest coming in on that money, which is, is good, I guess. But after that, you don't have it. You have like, you have like 2.5, maybe 5% interest on that, which is like, uh, if you're dealing with the multi millionaires, millions, it's really good money. But if you're dealing with a few thousands, like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's not good money at all. I got this thing by. Uh, Mr. Top G's email and it says Red says hope is a dangerous thing hope can drive a man insane he's explaining how the jail the matrix is easy to accept if you understand that you'll never escape as soon as you believe there's another way you feel pain you feel frustration and this is the difference between pessimism and optimism if you truly feel if you truly believe you are screwed, the system is against you and you'll never get out, a strange sense of calm comes over you. You feel comfortable with an action because it doesn't really matter anyway, does it? When I accepted I may never get out of prison, I felt better. Isn't that insane? This is exactly what I'm talking about and I haven't finished reading this email yet. This is exactly the paradigm that I'm talking about. If you become complacent and just allow the world to come at you instead of you coming at the world, you will go into an insane situation. And that insane, insane situation is mediocrity. And if you're happy within mediocrity, sure. Come on. Which one of us is truly happy within mediocrity? Which one of us is truly satisfied, fulfilled with mediocrity? You are just complacent. That's why the word complacent exists. You don't really want to be here, but you know, it's like it's cool, it's comfortable, might have a nice room, and then a stick or twist, ladies and gentlemen. It comes back to that philosophy as well. Hope can drive you insane, but that insanity 
breeds action, and action breeds change. I think Martin Luther King was completely okay with uh, black people getting absolutely racially abused. That drove him insane. And then he marched, and he marched, and he marched, he protested, he protested, protested, and now he changed the world. I think Muhammad Ali going to, to, to Nam. My country, by the way, get smoked, and my friends, lol, I'm joking, I'm joking, guys, hold on. Scoreboard. <laughs> you think Muhammad Ali going to, uh, going to Nam, about to die a, a pointless death, a pointless war, do you think that didn't drive him insane? The fact that innocent people getting killed, innocent Americans getting killed, innocent Vietnamese getting killed, don't you think that drove him absolutely nuts to the point where he protested, 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 and now because of his actions outside and inside the ring, he's considered the GOAT? I look at these four walls. I think to myself, within the next year and a half, I'm out of this hole. When I'm 19 turning 20, I'm out. I'm not gonna rent some shit place, I'm gonna rent some nice place. I'm gonna be making good money. Rent a nice place. Maybe just for a week, maybe just a hotel. Maybe it's in Spain and I'll still come back. But I'm gonna be in a much better place in this shit hole. People would kill to be in the position that I'm in. The majority of people that were killed in the situation they'd be having a couple of places and just stay here. I don't want to be one of those individuals. This is a good lower or middle middle or maybe potentially you could say upper middle class. I'm not definitely upper middle class, I'm like a few million net worth. Net worth, few million net worth like house paid off, car paid off. That type of shit. Motherfucker, man. I spent some bars in this video. But I believe I'm done. Perhaps there's anything more to say? When I accepted that I may never get out of prison, I felt better. Isn't that insane? When I was optimistic and hopeful that I was innocent, I would look at the walls around me and feel hot terrible, which is exactly what I went through. This became my prison. This became my, my cage. This is exactly the paradigm that millions of young men worldwide are suffering from. They finish school, they finish secondary school, high school, they finish college, they finish uni, and after they start, they work some shitty nine to five, they rent a shit place in the city. Oh, but in the city, they rent a shit place. It's a shit place. Some individuals like Adam, I just remember him now. I, like, I already said in the video that I, I don't care about it enough to remember him constantly, but when I record videos, I enter this virtual world almost where I remember people. And it's Adam individual. It's quite um, sad to see. It's Adam individual. He. Well, fuck, man, it's genuinely sad. He says something interesting that really resonates with me in his video. I'm 35 and I failed life. Which is fucking nuts, by the way. I'm, I'm so glad I'm on this album right now. I would have ended up just like him. 35 and I failed life. Minimum wage, get by, or the economy is shit, or finish, fail university, shut the fuck up. Shut up. I don't know what happened. After 20 years? Be introspective. Grow some fucking balls, bro. No one's gonna save you at 35. You can cope all you want. You can say, oh, no one's looking for a pee pipe when you are. All you want. That person, is, that individual is hopeless. He's not hopeless in entirety. You can still prepare yourself for the 40s. The next five years working a business trying to get something together, but for the large part, he's hopeless. He has no hope, and that's what I mean. He's not completely hopeless. He's an individual, he still has potential.
When I was optimistic and hopeful that I was innocent, I would look at the walls around me and feel terrible. And this Adam individual would describe the walls around him like a prison cell. I felt like I was trapped. The difference between me and Adam is that I have hundreds of more videos on him. And I'm going to continue to upload. I'm going to continue to create content. And I'm going to continue to try and change my life. I'm not even going to try. I am going to change my life. I'm not even going to try. Fuck trying. That do or do not, there is no try. Sounds like a cringe line from a Star's movie. Bro, that line. Potentially. Possibly. Probably. Highly likely changed the outcome of millions of lives worldwide, which is why Star Wars is so popular. Do or do not, there is no try. Have hope. One of the only things I sell on this channel is hope. It's the idea that you can change. That you don't have to stay in the same place. You don't have to do the same shit. The rest of your mundane shit life. I hate the idea of killing time. What is killing time? Why would you want to kill time? You only have so much time. You have like a thousand months in you. Which is like 80 years. 90 years. And then it's over. Game over. And for, as far as I know, and we know in general, in general, there is no heaven or hell. I mean, the penance potentially is. I hope it is. There is no afterlife. There's no reincarnation. And if there is, then... That's fucking amazing. Even though I am Buddhist, I have a tough time believing in the shit. This is too superficial and holy shit. Like Christians were telling me, oh, your Buddhism, like, how, how the fuck that reincarnation shit work? And Muslims were telling me that shit. Bro, you believe in heaven and hell, right? It was separate dimensions that your souls go to after you die. This is another thing of your, your a separate dimension that your soul goes to after you die. This, this It's all the same prepackaged bullshit. It's weird. Alright guys, I hope they're right though. One of them is right. I hope one of them is right. Because that, that adds clarity to this life. And God is definitely probably most likely real. But for choosing to follow God in a religious setting is... Well, is Islam is good, I have to admit. Uh, let's not be honest here. Islam is good. Islamic countries, fire. Islamic... Qatar, Dubai, fire. This, those countries are genuinely, genuinely good. I cannot, even as a non-believer, no disbeliever, a non-believer, I have to say those countries are phenomenal. That's a stupid tangent of mine. around me and feel terrible. I was thinking about moving my table into another room, but there's no other room to move it into. I'm maybe trying to separate my room up to like what I, what I used to, when I had a like, table here and like a little office space, just a, a separated designated office space in my room, which I really couldn't see my bed. Oh, I can see my bed, I can just kick my feet up sometimes when video editing. Game win, boys. Seventy six now, not seventy anymore. I think I'm gonna cut on this channel here. I think I'm gonna give him my main message. But I'm lacking something. Like, I had a point, but I didn't elaborate on it. And I just evaporated the, co the cosmos, and I can't seem to remember it. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, man. How long is the video? Half an hour, huh? Oh, half an hour mark. Yay. 
I'm in this video, boys. Catch you next one. Remember, with hard luck. <laughs> with hard work, with hard work alone, you can win.